finally got the base together for the uh, MPC and C to sit on. So this is the Primo version. I uh, bought the plans from V1 Engineering, and, or the files to print, and then most of it is printed in PLA with the standard uh, recommendations for infill. The only parts that aren't are the red parts you see. Those are ABS because I just had some to use up. And the, uh, the spindle mount is uh, PETG. And I'll put a, that's a, that's a Thingiverse uh, file to fit uh, the 800 watt uh, spindle motors. It's got an 800 watt uh, water cooled spindle in it. And yeah, it's nice to have the base done and finally get it kind of sitting how it's going to sit. Uh, I've made the base, I didn't have enough material to make the base quite as wide as I wanted to, so I'll have to sacrifice some cut area uh, in the Y direction because I didn't have enough wood to make the entire base uh, quite wide enough, so, but that, it's kind of okay because the smaller the machine gets, the less issues with rigidity I should have, so uh, hoping to be able to do at least soft metals like aluminum and brass uh, with this machine. Um, so soon uh, we'll get to wiring and putting some of the mechanical like the belts and the pulleys and everything uh, on the machine. That's a better view of the uh, spindle mount so that this dark blue is all PETG. Uh, just because I found it a little bit more flexible uh, just in case the contour is not quite right for this spindle motor and this is the I think this is the 1.2 kilowatt spindle motor uh, so that's the standard like Chinese one came from came with uh, uh, a water pump and a VFD one of those uh, standard Chinese VFDs. I'll throw a link in the description for the specific one I bought off of AliExpress, but it hasn't actually done any turning on yet, so I can't really say if I would recommend it or not. And this is all the uh, three-quarter inch uh, conduit. So I live in North America, and that was the easiest option for me aside from... Could have done the like ground steel bar option, but was looking for a cheaper setup and I can always change it if I need to although I'd have to reprint a bunch of stuff so that likely won't happen. I went and double checked uh, the AliExpress cart and uh, that is the 800 watt water cooled spindle and it comes with uh, one point what they say is a 1500 watt uh, VFD which it probably isn't but it should be fine to drive that spindle and you can get it in 110 or 220 volt. I think they've added the option to get a fully 110 system, but I had to specifically message them and ask if I could get a 110 VFD because I don't have 220 in the area where it's going to be plugged in. Because again, this is North America and three phase isn't even a thing, so unless you're an industrial building. Um, yeah, so I'll throw a link in the description for uh, that specific one because it was a pretty good value for money I would say and the spindle seems pretty good I gave it a quick check with a dial indicator for run out and stuff like that and the bearings seem seem good so we'll see uh, we'll see how that goes when it spins up but from everything I've seen uh, definitely go for the water cooled option because the fans on the back side of the air cooled ones are never balanced and they always cause the machine to vibrate and you want to get as much harmonic out of the system as possible given that you're kind of at a low rigidity machine what with you know being made out of conduit and plastic so this is the underside of the torsion table that's built for the MPC and C to mount on it is uh, uh, 5 8 inch MDF and it is half lap jointed together uh, so this whole torsion area was built first nice and level nice and flat rather, and uh, then this upper sheet was screwed down basically at every cross point and then the side pieces were added. Ideally I should have made these slightly longer and jointed these into them, but I just used some clamps uh, to apply pressure to the 
bottom of this to bring it up level with this before I put the screws in the side to make sure everything came in nice and level. And it should be like, it should add rigidity to the machine and it should be nice and stable. Like it shouldn't change in, uh, in size or shape very easily. And the ultimate plan is to, uh, to hinge it down from the wall so it doesn't live in the way all the time. I'll link to the video where I first saw that idea, if I can find it and remember what it was, but cool idea and a really cool set of hinges. So and I also uh, printed this uh, enclosure for the uh, SKR board and the touchscreen that, that you can get with it from uh, V1. So uh, that's what I went with for control options. That's got five uh, 2209 drivers and uh, this is going to have dual end stops so it should be able to auto square and I can't see why you would ever build a machine that if it was if it has the option to auto square you, you want that option because if you like crash the machine in the middle of a job or something like that you can resume you can square the machine and then resume from the middle of the job and the cutter should still end up at the same point in the machine like you should be able to resume a job assuming you didn't scrap the piece so definitely would recommend going with that option it's definitely not like a lot more expensive or anything so yeah uh, but I'll keep you in the loop and uh, hopefully this project progresses quickly and we can get some cuts made thanks for watching bye